uh, there was a kid, uh, Mark Mangino, Tommy Mangino is his, Tommy Mangino's his son. He was my offensive coordinator, so there was the connection there, and he just uh, gave a little phone call up to Coach Demo. He said, "I know you're gonna be down here." He said, "I've got a kid down here, uh, big K State fan, always been a dream." He's like, I "Do a lot of things for you. Uh, just take a look." And he took a look at my film from the bowl game, like what they saw. He said, "We can give you an opportunity as preferred walk on if you want the chance." And they just took off from there. Did you have any other opportunities at this level? I had a couple of Division One AA offers and then Division Two offers, but no FBS offers. It's kind of crazy to think about from, I mean, from there, not knowing if you're going to play the D1 to now. You got Arkansas players saying, you know, Cody Cook's the guy we got to keep an eye on because he can play all these different positions. What, what's that transformation like? It, it's pretty crazy. Uh, it's just going into that last game, not knowing if it was going to be my last game as a college athlete or even get to play at this level, and then to have what it's evolved into, is, it's been pretty cool. It's been a nice ride. It's something that you can look back on and enjoy for sure. When did you first start working at quarterback at K-State? Uh, when I first got there, when I first got recruited, I originally was a quarterback uh, in that spring, and then that whole fall I redshirted, and then we got into bowl prep, and I was like, well, Jake's pretty good, so uh, I want to play. So I moved to receiver and took off from there. And as far as this season, though, when did you start working at quarterback? Uh, about the Louisiana Tech, Oklahoma State, that bye week. What are the challenges playing you know, quarterback and receiver? Uh, be, surprisingly, it's not that not as big a challenge because you get to you're in the same room for the most part, and you, the concepts and plays are the same because you got to know what the receivers are doing at quarterback and the offset receiver. You got to know what they're doing, and then you know the progression. So it's actually a pretty smooth transition. Yeah, you know, Tannehill, the, the Dolphins starter, he was a receiver day and M, and then he kind of got thrown into quarterback. Mm -hmm. and are, are you familiar with his story? And is that something you can kind of look and say, well, it worked out pretty good for him? Yeah, yeah, I, I'm pretty familiar with Ryan Tannehill. Uh, the, where he was at A&M and how he got to where he is now, it's pretty pretty cool to be able to look at that and say he kind of did something similar and then see where it goes from here. What has bowl prep been like for you with the coaches saying they still haven't named who's going to start? I just try to take it uh, day by day and just go step by step and you can only control what you can control. So take my reps at quarterback and then go to wide receiver and take my reps at wide receiver and just try to do it full speed and the best of my ability. And then whoever's number is called on Saturday, I'll go to the, whatever position that is. What, what percent of reps in practice do you take at each position? It's 50-50. Uh, me and Joe will split reps, and then when he's at quarterback, I'll go to receiver and just try to keep fresh at both. Any special motions about playing in your last K-State game? Uh, just go out on top. Do you guys know who's going to start and they're just not saying? I, I have a hard time believing they wouldn't tell you guys who's going to uh, start. We don't. We have no idea. Really? Do they no just idea. tell you in warm-ups or the night before the game? Or when do they tell you? <laughs> I really don't know. That would be a question you have to ask Coach Snyder because I, I really have no idea.